Yeah, oh, hello everyone and welcome back to our channel of the GFG Pure Fish Week of Day 130. So if you are new to this channel, please like and subscribe so that we can learn, maintain and grow our streak together. So let's continue with the today's question, what the today's question is about. And before starting the question, so yes, before starting the question, so as we discussed that anybody who is able to achieve anything uh, through our journey of code, then uh, I should give him or her a shout out on my channel so that like it'd be good for everyone else right so manish kumar has posted that he has recently uh, require, uh, got one t-shirt from the uh, gfg so congratulations manish and kudos to your consistency so we will definitely do uh, uh we will definitely do good in the long run so yes so the second person here is atul kumar saini so congratulations to you as well i see that you have got two goodies as one bag and one t-shirt so I hope you will maintain your consistency and you will definitely do good in the long run. And thanks for both of you for mentioning my names. So with this good note, let us start the today's question. So today's question name is optimal array practice, right? So it is a medium category question, I guess. Yeah. So let us read the question and when we, and we will discuss that what are all the different approaches that we can think and able to code off, right? So you are given a sorted array A of length n for each i belonging to 0 to i minus 1. You have to make an all elements of the array from index 0 to i equal. Okay. Using the minimum number of operations. In one operation, you can either increase or decrease the array element by 1. You have to return a list which contains the minimum number of operations for each i to accomplish the above task. Okay. So 0 base index in. Okay. So what you have to do is for each and every i, right? You have to uh, make the array elements in the range of 0 to i. Such that you have to maintain the minimum number of increment or decrement you are doing to the particular sub array. Right? So what it is saying is that uh, it is saying for i equals to 0, uh, since this is only one uh, element in this sub array, so it is saying that just convert 1 into the 1, right? Which is the only element present. So the minimum number of increment on decrement will be nothing right it will be zero for i equals to 1 1 to 6 they are saying let us convert it to 4 right so what are the steps required to convert it to 4 so if you convert 1 to 4 then you have to increase 1 3 times so it will you can either take the uh, abs value so 1 minus 4 it will be 3 similarly to convert 6 to 4 you have to decrement it two times right so that's why i've taken 6 minus 4 and they are summing up those and total increment and decrement and returning that as answer so 5 similarly for 169 they are choosing the element as 6 and they have taken the difference of the abs value from each and every element summing up which is giving to 8 similarly for i equals to 3 they have chosen the given element 8 and doing the abs differences summing up those differences to get the sum as 14 right okay so the first approach that is coming to my mind the like very naive approach like reading the question that approach comes to my mind is that you need to perform the minimum number of uh, increment or decrement steps right to convert so for the first element it will be always zero i guess it will be always zero so the first two elements so let's say we have the elements as one six right and it's a sorted thing so the elements are sorted so let's say you have a number line let's say you have a number line which has some elements x y and uh, let's say z and you have another element let's say as k right and these are given in a sorted form right so if i ask you if i ask you what should be the most relevant number in this number line most relevant number in this number line such that the distance from each and every point will be the minimum right then you will say that yeah, we can take the point which is actually in the middle of all those points right then we can say that that maybe, not maybe, among all the possibilities, if we take the middle point, then the total increment or decrement which we have to perform will be the minimum, right? Why I'm saying this? Suppose we have taken that point to point of reference here, right? Then you will see that this point will be minimum to x, somewhat greater to y, but it will be the maximum difference to x and k, right? So why to consider that much of uh, uh, increasing possibility right so the most feasible thing will be to convert to take a point in the middle of your range range of numbers right 
and since this is a sorted form then this middle number is known as median right so if the n is odd if the number of elements is odd then you just take the n by 2th term and if the number of elements is even then you have to take n by 2 plus n by 2 or n plus 1 by 2th term i will say n term and you have to divide it by 2 right right this is n by 2th term this is n by 2th term n plus 1 by 2th term divided by 2 right okay so let us see that if this thing falls into our case or not right so for the first element it will be 0 let me give you a dry run for for the first two elements that is 1 and 6 so the median of these two elements will be 6 plus 1 uh, 7 divided by 2 that will be nothing but 7 by 2 it's 3 right now takes the learn let's take the abs difference so it will be 1 minus 3 plus 6 minus 3 and if you will see that this sums up to 5 right and you have the 5 as your answer. So let's take the second group of elements. So that is 1, 6, and 9. Since the it's an odd element, then this middle element will be our median. Now let's take the absolute difference of all the elements. So I will do 6 minus 6 plus 9 minus 6. So if you see that it will sum up to 5 plus 0 plus 3, it will be 8. And as you can see, that 8 is matching to our required output. Now let's take the numbers verified for last subarray. So it will be the median will be nothing but 6 plus 9 by 2 which is 15 by 2 which is pointing to 7 right so let us take the absolute differences so 1 minus 7 plus 6 minus 7 plus 9 minus 7 right plus 12 minus 7 what would be the uh, addition so 1 minus 7 the abs will be 6 6 minus 7 it will be 1 9 minus 7 it will be 2 12 minus 7 it will be 5 if we sum up this value, it will be 6 plus 5, 11, uh, 11, and plus 3, 14. As you can see, it matches our required output. So I think this was a very naive approach, right? A very brute approach, as you can say. The first approach, the first obvious approach that comes to my mind, right? Okay, so what are the steps involved here is that I have to iterate for each and every element. So for this is for i equals to 1. This is for i equals to 2. This is for i equals to 3. So definitely I'll be I'll be using a for loop here, right? So if I write a pseudo code for you guys, it will be it will be a for loop. So for i equals to 0 to i less than n, i plus plus. And before moving on this pseudo code, I highly recommend you guys to stop this video here. I have given you the intuition. Try to code it yourself, analyze the time complexity, and if not, uh, write for 7 to 10 minutes and then resume the video again right so we will be using one for loop here for each and every iteration i need one median right so i will maintain a pointer let's say int median equals to 0 now this will have two cases right so let's say if if the number of elements right since it's a zero base index and i will check from i plus 1 percent 2 if the number of elements is even then what i will check i will find the median using the add elements at two position right First is i by 2, first is i by 2, then a of i plus 1 by 2 and whole of by 2, right? This is the even case. And suppose if the number of elements is percent 2 is not equals to 0, then I will say that median will be nothing but a of i by 2, right? The i by 2 is term. Now we have found the median uh, after that we have to iterate for all the for the this sub array right for the sub array we found the median and the sub array is present in j equals to 0 to j less than equals to i j plus plus let's make a variable here let's say long current answer current answer for each and every sub array what i have to do that current answer is nothing but math dot abs of i will take the values Math dot abs of what a of j minus my median value right you take the abs of them and after this for loop you have to store it in your let's say answer array because the question is saying that you have to return one long data type array so for each and after for each and every iteration afterwards i will just say that store this answer current answer right 
and we'll end the for loop here and the last thing we have to just one one thing that return answer right <coughs> so i have given you more than enough intuition now as well as the pseudo code the time complexity of this code will be we are iterating one for loop so it will be o of n but then again we are do doing this median work in o of n it's just two if statement this for loop is iterating for each and every sub array possible right so it will again the worst case will be that it will iterate for all the elements so it will be o of n so the overall time complexity is o of n square and since the return type was itself this long so i will made a long answer right so that would not be considered the space complexity because that was required by the question so i will say that my time complexity is o of 1 let us get back to the constraint part and we will see that if we are able to code this solution that which we are and our logic works fine then what is the constraint then constraint is 10 power 6 here so if you do 10 power 6 squares it will be 10 power 12 which is definitely which is definitely greater than 10 power 8 so if our code is right which is and if you are able to uh, approach uh, code the logic which we are then it will give you the TLE for some of the cases where the uh, time complexity is going greater than 10 power 8 but still we are in the learning phase so we will we will code this brute force and we will see for ourselves that is TLE really coming and if yes then what is the optimization right so I have given you enough code and intuition here please pause the video here try running this pseudo code in your code editor because th is, this is the exact code I will be writing in my editor and we will see right so let me pause the video now you also pause this video now code this in your editor and come back right Okay, so I have mentioned the exact code I used to ex I used to explain in the paint section. There is one for loop there for each and every elements. There is one median for each and every sub array we are considering. The exact dry run I showed you for i equals to one, i equals to two, and i equals to three, right? After calculating the median, we are again traversing using this for loop into our sub array, and then we are getting the track of our abs values and then finally storing it our answer array and we are returning that answer so let us compile and run and we will see that if our logic and the required output matches or not so great it matches and it's time to hit the submit button but we we know that it will definitely give the time time limit exceed right so we will still submit it we will waste our one submission to exactly verify it because that 10 power 8 logic the power of constraints always hold in each and every question and that's the main intuition right that you will be ahead in more than 50 percent of the audience in online assessment because many of them don't know so it's a very curious point if you want to know in depth that that how is 10 power 8 coming into a game then i have made a specific video on that you can watch it in the playlist right as you can see time limit exceeds it come right so what is the optimization now as i already as i every time explained to you that optimization is nothing but you have to uh, analyze that what are the repeating steps right you have to analyze what are the repeating steps then you have to eliminate them no not eliminate them or you can say eliminate them or optimize those steps right leave the rest of the code as it is and optimize it right try to think of it now again and then we will resume our video okay so this time i also take took some hint from the hint section because i was also uh, getting some difficulties here so let me explain you this way that uh, what if that we uh, while iterating we keep a track of our some variables so let me open a new paint for you okay so before proceeding on as we discussed that you have to analyze the repeating steps so let us analyze first that what are the repeating steps here as we can see that uh, we have maintained one for loop here which is taking o of n complexity right but what are we doing again that for i equals to one we are finding the absolute values for a particular median for one and six then we are calculating again the absolute difference of medians for the same two elements plus one extra elements right then in i equals to three then you are calculating the same differences for one six nine and one extra element is coming right so you are repeating these steps what if you were able to maintain some some variables right some one or some two which will help you to get which will help you to maintain the median differences so the intuition here is intuition here is it may be complex to understand in one go 
so i'll request you guys to hang on with me bear on with me so intuition here is that when you are iterating when you are iterating assume assume that a of i is your median is your median and process the other things and process the other things accordingly accordingly right so let us see that how we can how we can assume that a of i is our median and if we assume it then what are the steps required so i will give you one dry run let's say we have this element as 1 6 and 9 and i am at this pointer and i am saying that for I'm at this point i equals to one and I'm saying that this is my median, right? And if I ask you guys that if in this array, if this is my median, then what should be the particular sub array for this six will be behaving as median, right? I will say that you have to pick this element, pick this sub array, then only you can say that six is your median, right? Okay, I hope you got this point. And then now assuming it that this is my median what other variables I need to maintain. So let us assume that while you iterate till one to six, you have this where you have this sum stored as someone or let me um, minimize it, the name as S1, right? And now you need to include this variable as well, this element as well. And you have one more element here that is 12, right? So let's come back to this, this element. How can we include this, right? I can, clearly check with one if statement that this is one right this is one i can check that if two star i is less than n right if we if you do two star i it would point to one right and you have to check that if it's inbound that is less than n right just try to accept the points here and then and then i i i will i hope that you will be able to make a summary out of it so i will check th this point uh, I need to include this point, right? So I will check this with two star i less than n. So when I checked it, I see that okay, it is inbound. So what I need to do, I need to make a s2 variable which will see that add this element in my s2. So what I will say that s2 plus equals to a of two star i, right? So s2 was having the sum as s1 itself. And now it has S2 as 1, 6, and 9. Assume it has it, right? We will code, we'll code that part. Just assume that we have the structure like this, and then what can all we can do here? Right? <clears throat> so what can I say now is what can I say now is that in this S1, in this S1, what are we doing? Right? We find the median and then we find the median. And I was subtracting this median to this element, to this element, and to this element. All the elements present in the sub array, right? So can I write, can I write, okay, let's say our difference or let's say our current answer for this sub array, for this sub array, 1, 6 and 9, my current answer, can I write some equation for it? So it says that we can get an answer in O of 1 in, in respective that we have maintained this variable S1 and S2. So S1 is pointing to 7, S2 is pointing to 7 plus 9, that is 16. So what I need to do is I have to subtract six in this in this sum two times, right? So what can I say that let us I, I need two times, right? So i equals to one. If I do i plus one, it will be pointing to two, right? So I can say that i plus one star the median. Or uh, let, let me write it in the in the layman first. So to I need two star median to subtract in my s1. Right, because I need to subtract six into this part, into this part, and I was taking the ABS values, right? So after doing this, I handle the first two elements. Now I have to handle the this element, just the this element. So if I do S2 minus S1, then I will be the exact value that is pointing to third element, right? So that is what I'm gonna do. I will say S2 minus S1 star. I need to subtract my median just once because there is only one element left, right? So I will use again the ith pointer, right? So S2 minus S1, I will say minus the i pointer star A of i, 
So now now, now generalize the statement. So it will be i star one, i plus one star a of i. The median was nothing but a of i minus s one. This will be our first case. The second case will be the second part will be s two minus s one minus i star a of i. Just try to bear on with me, and you will be getting it eventually, right? So this was the case. This was the case six was being part of this one six nine. But can I say that? Can I say that six was six may be the part of this whole element as well one six nine and twelve, right? How can I say that? How can I say that? Let me use a different a sheet here. So one six nine and twelve. I am saying that six can be as the part of median because for this four elements, for these four elements, these two are behaving in making a median right so when i am this point i need to check that if there is some relation between this element which is acting as median to this element and this is i right and this is 2 star i and this is 2 star i plus 1 so i need to check now for 2 star i plus 1 as well right so i will check if 2 star i plus 1 is less than n if it is then we have to repeat the same steps again now the only thing will change is that 1 6 9 and 12 the s1 will be pointing to again at this this point and s2 will be pointing to this one right right and before moving ahead let us solve this equation also which we wrote initially so it will be uh, let us use this space it will be nothing but 2 into 6 right minus S one, which is seven, right? It will be plus S two is nothing but sixteen minus seven minus. It will be one star six. If you solve it, you will get as five plus nine minus six as eight, right? And you can see that eight was the answer for i equals to one, right? Similarly, let's do it for i equals to one. But what are the other other elements can be part of this, right? So for this part, I will write the same equation again, but only the i will be changing to i plus one this time, right? So I will say that my current answer is nothing but this equation will remain same because again one plus one and one comma six is again pointing to s one, right? So this will remain same. So let me write with the same color i plus one star a of i minus s one. This will remain same. The only thing changes is from here. Ah, uh, is from here. This s two minus s one will also remain same, right? We have the two elements now. The only thing will change is from i equals to i plus one because we need to subtract the medium two times because the remaining elements is two. So I will say i plus one star a of i. A of i is nothing but the median that we are assuming for each and every i. Now, if you solve it, it will be. I plus one is what? Two. It will be two into six minus s one is seven. Plus s two minus s one is nothing but twenty eight minus seven. Right? Where s two is twenty eight, the sum of all the four elements, and s one is the sum of the first two elements. That is seven. If you do it minus, it will be. Ah, uh, if you follow the same along, it will be two star six. If you solve it, it will be six plus twenty one minus twelve. That is six plus eight. That is fourteen. Right? So the second answer. Sum eight, right? And the next answer was fourteen, right? So you have to maintain one i d x also. One i d x also. I will do. Let's like this. Answer of i d x plus plus is equals to this current answer. Similarly for this also, that answer of i d x plus plus is equals to current answer. And if you observe that after getting to this, just i equals to one, we were able to find find the answer for i equals to two and i equals to three as well. So that means We will have some, let's say, a mid pointer. Let's say a mid pointer, or let's say we can just write a for loop for i equals to zero to so i less than n plus one by two i plus plus, and you can mention these two if statement, the first if statement and the second if statement, and accordingly the answer will be updated, right? So it will don't get frustrated. It will be it is a bit ah uh, more lengthy to understand at a first go. But uh, I am definitely sure that if you try to dry run this test case again, after uh, again, then you will be able to understand that how the flow is going. 
So I highly recommend you guys to stop this video again. Uh, visit this dry run, what I've showed you, and try to dry run this 16912 from this i equals to zero to, to the last, right? And then we eventually be able to code this solution as well. So pause the video now, do the dry run, and try to code the solution. Meanwhile, I will I will open my editor and code it. So I've coded the skeleton part that what are all the if conditions are there, what are all the uh, my variables are required. So let us now put the major to if statement as I showed you. So whenever we are going into this two statement and we incur that this two, two star i, the next element which is part of a, uh, which is the part of the sub array where we are finding a median, that, that means we have to include that variable, that element into our another sum, right? So I will say that include that into my sum two and then the same thing which I showed you on my dry run that we need to subtract the median into each and from each and every element as we did in our brute force technique, right? So, uh, so if you try to relate with the brute force technique, we are doing the same thing just in a different manner, maintaining a two variables so that we don't have to repeat the second step, second for loop, and we will uh, eliminate our O of n complexity uh, in the nested for loop, right? So we will do the same thing. So current answer is nothing but i plus one, i plus one star a of i. So this this handle the first part, right? If I do minus s one, this handle the first part. This will be our second part of this. This this s two minus s one is considering the remaining elements, which is part of that sub array, and then. I have to subtract the median from it that is i star a minus i. i is the number of times the median should be subtracted, right? And then we have to store this answer as well. So, answer of i dx plus plus is equals to current answer, right? The same thing you have to code for 2 star i plus 1 as I showed you in the dry run that the next element may also be the part of the same median. Right, as we discussed in the brute force as well. Right, so S2 will be again taking this element in it, 2 star i plus 1. This first part will remain same, only the second part was up getting updated. Right, so we need to this that how many times the median should be subtracted with, will also get updated because we are including one more element. So I will do i plus 1. Right, rest all the things uh, remain same right and at last we are returning the answer so let's compile and run so maybe there is a case maybe there is a case now that some of you might not able to understand still now that how the code is working right so we are at the last stage i have i have given you the code i have given you the dry run as well so i highly recommend you guys for the starters who are maintaining the streak may not able to apprehend that this technique I also face some difficulty, so that's not an issue. Honesty is the great policy, right? So try to dry run, dry run the uh, first test case by yourself again in your uh, using pen and paper, and then I'm definitely sure that you will to get it right. Okay, so that is it. Because the the best way to solve any problem to understand any problem if you're not getting it is to dry run it. Similarly, in the case of DFS and BFS in the graph, just dry run the code, and you will you will see that how the things are going. Right, so uh, it's not a problem. So there are some like obstacles in uh, some journey, so you have to overcome it. So that's all right. So if you talk about the talk about the time complexity, then it is taking just one for loop, and rest of the things are in the if statement that will be O of one. So if I submit this code, then it will be taking O of n, and n is ten power six, which is definitely less than ten power eight, and it should get submitted. Right. So after, let us wait for some more seconds. So yeah, it got submitted. So definitely, congratulations for all, all and everyone who made it till last. If not, just bear with me. Uh, <laughs> try to watch the video again. You will definitely get it. Few last things that for the initiative I have taken that this is the C plus Java code I have uh, given you as the live coding thing. So this is the C plus plus code, the brute force technique, which is there, right? And this is the efficient one in the C plus plus, the Java code I already showed you. That's the C++, the language should not be barrier for any learner here. 
so that is it for today's video let us meet for the next video of day 131 till then bye bye take care keep learning keep growing and bye